On this video, I'm gonna do my best to save you some pain and help you make more money by growing your business more quickly. As always, my goal is that you guys do everything better than me. You grow your business faster, you grow your business bigger, you make less mistakes, you make less money costing mistakes along the way, time costing mistakes, and ultimately, you go through less pain to build your business. Now here's the deal. I want you to have to go through some pain because that's how you build yourself into the type of person that can take your business to the next level, but there is such a thing as unnecessary pain and you can limit it by being smart enough to learn from others, which if you're here doing, you're already doing. If you're listening to this video, you're trying to learn through the mistakes of others, not the mistakes of your own. So I commend you for that because I didn't do that. And that is the first thing that I wanna talk about is being willing to go out there and put in the time to learn from others and not thinking that you or your business is special because I definitely did. And I didn't think my business was special or I was special in the sense that I was better than everybody. I thought that all of the advice out there and all the things that you could do to grow your business didn't apply to me because I was a photographer and I had a photography business. And in my mind, there was two types of businesses. There was photography businesses and real businesses. And it's super silly looking back, but like, and I didn't necessarily say it to myself like that. I just immediately discounted advice that I'd hear from others. And more importantly, I didn't go seek it out because I didn't think it would apply to my business. And that caused a lot of problems in my business because I wasn't able to learn from others. And the only people I was able to learn from were people who had built photography businesses and most of the time, not very successfully. So I was trying to take business advice from people who were great artists, which I was not, but didn't have great businesses, which is what I actually wanted. So the biggest mistake that belief that I held caused me to make is a lot of lost upside potential and a lot of time chasing better quality photos, chasing a better, longer, more complicated, better workflow that didn't actually help me or didn't serve my clients or they didn't even like. I'd make mistakes, for example, like I would wanna spend more time on site to get better quality photos, but what I didn't know is that my clients wanted faster. They wanted me out of there, in and out, and so a faster workflow is that what they valued. And so if you're starting a business, if it's a real estate photography business, if it's a, a business making custom tables, whatever the business is, I would encourage you to not think of your business as somehow in a, its own category, in a different category of business, but think about it more like it's a business because that's what it is and the same things that people have already gone through and the same feelings you, they had about their business being special are the feelings you have now and so your willingness to learn from them will help you a lot. And that is mistake number one. The second mistake I made was I relied too heavily on referrals and I didn't do a lot of active marketing. And here's the sad thing about this. My business was growing quickly with referrals, but I didn't know how much faster it could be growing if I paired referrals with an active source of leads. So we talk a lot about the Instagram method on my channel. When I first started my business, I did not use the Instagram method, number one, in the way we do now because it's been through a lot of refinement, but number two, I didn't nearly put as much effort into it as I should. It was a few minutes a day type thing versus our coaching clients, the ones that grow quickly, that's their number one priority. They're dumping all of their extra time into that because that's how you grow a business quickly. It took me a long time to get my business to first 4k month in fact well over a year of doing it part-time before I could make the jump to full-time and do a 4k month where some of our students have done that in their second third months and even in their first month in some cases is the first month typical no but months three four and five that's more reasonable to expect to get there if you do the things required and I didn't have that belief and I didn't know it was possible because I thought I just had to wait on referrals now here's the thing with referrals you need referrals in your business you know the thing that took my business from 4K a month to 20K a month to 50K a month and so on was a ton of people referring me. But referrals are more of a second stage of growth. You need to get some active leads going before the referrals will kick in. And I like to think about this like a snowball rolling down the hill. So you have to put in, like you have to make that snowball initially, right? And you have to like pack it together and then you have to start it rolling, which all of that takes effort. But once it starts rolling, it starts to roll on its own and it starts to grow on its own and that's what referrals do for you. But if you don't do the initial work, if you're just waiting for a snowball to spontaneously form on its own and start rolling, you're probably gonna be waiting forever or at least a lot longer than if you would have done the initial work. And so that's kind of the two distinct stages of your business. The first stage is all about active putting in the work to get those leads to grow your business. And then your business, it's one of the nice things about real estate media and real estate photography, your business will take over its own growth if you do a good job from referrals, but you won't get those referrals unless you start the active outreach. And so if I could go back, if I could do things differently, which is the theme of this video, I would devote at least half of my time to actually doing the Instagram method and half my time to shooting. And I would make sure that stayed the case and I would you know, do the things required to make that happen instead of just be lazy, sit back and wait for the business to come. The third thing I wish I would have done differently is looked for a system that could run my business all in one. 
And so what a lot of people do when they start their business, which part of this is normal, but they'll find some way to invoice and they have that. And then they'll find a way to have a calendar and they'll find a way to deliver the photos. And it, it ends up being like these one little patch at a time where you have like 10 softwares you're working with and that's really complicated. And that's what I did. I had a software that was good at scheduling and I have a software that was good at this. And what I didn't know because I didn't take the time to research it, again, I was so focused on making the mistakes as I kind of talked about in the first thing I wish I would have done differently that I didn't go look for other solutions that people had already discovered. And so what I didn't know is that there was a bunch of great softwares built for real estate media companies that do all of that in one. We use currently a company called Spiro. Their website is Spiro.media and it's an awesome solution. And we're actually a part of their team now, which is super cool, but it does everything. Delivery of photos, invoicing, scheduling, and all of these other metrics and reporting all in one. And so we were able to just get rid of a bunch of softwares as we moved to the first system we use. So find a system for your business. If you're not in real estate media, I promise you there is a solution for you. If you have a lawn care business, there's a lawn care software. If you have a business making whatever, whatever widget you make, there's a software that's going to be tailored and it's going to combine a lot of those. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to use one or two additional softwares to run your business, but it means you're going to limit the number of softwares you have. And they call that your tech stack. The simpler tech stack you can have, the less softwares, the better. The fourth thing I wish I would have done differently is let people into my process sooner and trusted them more quickly. As my business grew to four and then 10K a month and 15K a month, 20K a month, I started bringing more people into the company, but I would not trust them to do the things that would actually clear up time on my plate because I thought that I was special and I didn't mean that in an arrogant way. It was just, man, I've been doing this for so long. How could they possibly do it as good as me? And that is a limiting belief that every single business owner has when they first start their business. And it takes a couple things to make it happen where you don't believe that anymore. Number one is it takes a, an A player, like a true A player on your team before you realize that there are not only people who can do it as good as you, but can do it better. So that's number one, it takes an A player. Number two, it takes you being willing to let them fail in the short term so that they can learn in the same way you did to grow in the long term. And a lot of people are too scared to do this because they're like, it's gonna make my business shrink. I promise you, if you train them properly and you're invested in making sure that they can perform well, it will not make your business shrink. What will make your business shrink is never bringing on good people to help it grow. There's so much upside that you're losing. And so it's about finding the right candidate, being willing to interview more than I did. I would interview two people and hire one. Now I interview 10 for every person I hire. And so really going, okay, there's two sides to this. I need to find the best people out there to do that role in my business. The best people that I can afford when you're a small business, you can't afford top talent yet, but you can afford the best of the category that you can afford forward and finding the right people and being committed to interviewing enough of them. And the second stage of that is once you've done that, once you pick the right person, let them come in there, train them the best you can and let them start failing so you can adjust them so you can trust them in the future. Because once you start getting some A players in your business, it's crazy how fast your business grows. My businesses now do hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue and there's no way that I could do that without the people I have on my team. And so if you do wanna grow your business, if you wanna take it to the next level, it's a requirement that you find those people. And so rather than say, I can't do that, I'm gonna keep pushing, reframe it and be like, I'm gonna do that, like I need to do that. How can I find the right people? And again, this doesn't apply until you're doing more than 15K a month. Below that, you can totally do it all yourself. But after that point, your growth is gonna be dependent on how willing and how much work you put in to find the right people. And here's the key word, it takes work. It's not easy, but that's what the work becomes to take your business to the next level. Maybe the first zero to 15K was all about you just grinding and then on client acquisition, right? And finding those clients. And then maybe the next 15K is about you grinding to find the right people that will help you do that, help you grow your business. And the fifth thing that I wish I would have done differently in my business, and I would argue the biggest one of them all, is I wish I would have been more focused on profit. You know, when you get into business, you're very excited about the money you make. And you'll say, hey, I made 15 or I made 12K this month or I made 4K this month or even your first month, you make 1K or 2K. The first month you do that, it's a big milestone. And, and the thing that really messes people up is when it's just you, when you say I made 5K this month, you probably took home almost all of that. You didn't have very many expenses. And so you train yourself to think of revenue as the ultimate goal, which you have to grow your revenue if you wanna grow your profit. But they're very similar numbers at the start. But what happens is you move to 15K, they're still very similar numbers. But then you move to 25K a month in your business and you have people and all of a sudden your revenue might be 25K, but you're only taking home 15. So those numbers start to become different. But a lot of times you're so focused on revenue that you don't realize that. And then you grow your business to 50K and you realize that, you know, your profit may have stayed 15, but now you're doing 50K in revenue. So what happens is people get so fixated because initially they're the same 
on that revenue goal that they forget about profit and profit in their business becomes an accident. And in my opinion now, profit is the sign of a healthy business. Revenue is great, but if you make 50K a month and you spend 49,999, you made a dollar. And that's not enough to grow your business. That's not enough to have the margin to hire people. And so what happens is because you're focused on revenue, that's what you go for. But if you're focused on profit, you're gonna solve different problems and you're gonna build a much more efficient business. And so this is something that you can start doing now and you definitely should is, is looking at your revenue, but also trying to make your profit as high as possible. But you're not gonna notice a lot of difference now. But if you start doing this now, you're gonna train yourself to focus on what will really matter as you get to 50K, 100K a month, 150, 200, 250K a month in your business. And then it, you know, if you haven't, if you built a sloppy business because you haven't focused on other numbers besides just revenue, you're not gonna have a lot of profit. And that's what I did my first few years in business. And it wasn't the end of the world. I didn't actually spend 50K and make 50K, but let's say it was we we're making 18K a month. And I was making 14K, it was great, right? But then my business went to 35K a month and I was only making 15. Then my business went to 50K a month and I was only making 17. It's like my, my profit was going up and it, 17K a month, take home income is awesome, right? That's great, but it could be better if you, and it could make your business healthier and able to grow faster if you focus on maximizing that number. Now, I don't mean being stingy here. I just mean like building an efficient business, not having softwares that renew that you don't use or not worrying about costs or not trying to get costs down in areas and not trying to be smarter. Growth is great. I'm a growth person. It's impossible to make 50K a month take home if you make only 30K a month in revenue, but the opposite is true. A lot of people build these you know, 50K a month businesses and they only make 10. Don't do that. You have so much more potential and it shows you're being kind of a lazy operator. And the thing that's also true is when people are lazy operators in their business, they just focus on one number They're and, and so their business finances are kind of a mess. Usually their personal finances follow. And I know that's kind of like a boring thing to talk about and it's not fun for people, but it's really true. And so you gotta focus on what matters in your business. And when you do that, you're also gonna focus on what matters in your personal life. And then all of the work that you've put in to build a business is actually gonna pay off, right? Because most people get into business for one of two things and usually a combination of both. To make more money and to have more time. You ask a lot of business owners, they don't have a lot more time. They usually have a lot less time, right? So they didn't achieve number one. And number two, they often don't make more money unless they do it properly. And so if you think about that, it's like taking a step back going, why did I start this business and reorienting on that? Because my goal for you is to build a business that allows you to have those two things. More times you can do what you want. Maybe that's spending more time in your business. Maybe it's not, maybe it's doing both and also more money. I want you to be able to build wealth with your business because that's probably the reason you started. And so that's why I'm always on people about make sure you're getting something out of your business. You know, there's this thing that's kind of permeated in entrepreneurship of like all these Silicon Valley companies that lose money forever and then they, they sell and all the founders are rich and that's a very different type of business than a service business. You don't run a service business unprofitable until it gets big. That's just not how it works. That works in venture funded and these big software companies that require scale, but that mentality really doesn't do well for service business owners. And service businesses are great if you use them well, because service businesses, they're not really fail or succeed. They're just to what extent do you succeed and what extent you succeed is honestly based upon the work you put in. Whereas software is like boom or bust. And so don't use something that works in one business model in your business, make profit and you should make profit from month one. And that's the awesome thing about a service business is you don't have to invest a lot to get it started. So all that being said, those are the five mistakes that I wish I wouldn't have made. If you want us to help you not make those mistakes and the whole boatload of others that you will probably make, we'd love to work with you in coaching if you're gonna start a real estate media company or you wanna grow your real estate media company to the next level. We don't help anybody else. We only help people with real estate media, but if that's your goal, we'd love to work with you and we're the right people for the job. So apply, talk with my team more about what that would look like, and I'll see you on the next video.